Hey folks, Lee Craft, Monday Morning Racer here, Keystone Raceway. Hopefully show you some footage of the facility later. Here, well, not filming, not doing pit reporting duties, but first time ever going to be on the mic announcing this particular funny car drag race of the Great Lakes Funny Car Circuit. Dunn had the driver's meeting and been walking through the pits, talking with drivers and crew, getting some stories, so we've got some material to announce and tell the story of these racers. Let's take a look at some of these great funny cars that are out here. that it means more so okay. Thank you. Uh, pretty much we're going to do everything we'll try to get uh, I guess some of the guys some of you guys want to take a test in my first time ever here to Keystone Raceway Park and what a beautiful facility it is. It's a quarter mile drag strip, a little over a quarter mile shutdown area on a slight incline and I can tell you one way in which you can clearly see that a track is well taken care of and that is the shutdown area and in particular the sand pit. Does it have one? What does the net look like? Is the sand well manicured? And taken care of that is the case here at keystone raceway park greg miller the owner is doing a fabulous job of making this place a premier place to run in western pennsylvania and it is situated east of the city of pittsburgh but beautiful little tower aluminum grandstands so much more that i could show you here as well and we're looking forward to a great program of funny cars
folks are milling around, enjoying the funny cars here, the Great Lakes Nostalgia Funny Car Circuit. And we know that he's the Grand Poopah because Hello, he's wearing the hat that says so, Dennis Salzwimmer. Man, it's got to warm your heart. you got so many fans out here right now just enjoying good old funny cars. You know, this is fantastic. Wow. Uh, we brought the cars on this the spectator side of the track and uh, got them out of the stands. They don't come over to the other side for some reason, but these guys are signing tons and tons of autographs, and we got posters and all kinds of good stuff. It's great. Absolutely. Definitely. Everybody's having a good time. Yep. Absolutely. Wait till, wait till 6.30 and we get some noise on the track. I don't know about you, but I feel there's something majestic about a funny car body slowly being lowered down and locked into position and then slowly rolling through the water box. I definitely hope that we get a side-by-side -side burnout right here. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, there's a burnout competition. You hoot, you holler, you cheer for the ones that do the best burnouts and let them know that you're glad they're right here at Keystone Raceway Park. sideways on his burnout. Kevin to back up though, but Chris in that Monza total insanity. That was a total insane burnout right there. Almost taking it to the eighth mile mark. He's bringing it back. His wife, Krista, uh, jogging out to bring him back to the line. Two beautiful nostalgia machines. One, a Monza funny car here in the near lane of the tower in the far lane. A Trans Am. Trans Am! What's your pleasure? Uh, I know for Mr. Feinhofer, his pleasure is to go the quickest he can and do it ahead of Chris Mozzarella there in total insanity. Both cars now moving forward. Looks like we're going to get a race. Dry hops from Chris. Back, they back away from the cars. Pre-staged. Staged. We're ready for funny car action. Both cars straight down the track. Full quarter mile pulls. And you have Chris Mozzarella with a 696. That's a good run, especially in keeping in mind the index that they have got to hold two, which is 690. They do not want to go any quicker than that, 197 miles per hour. But notice the mile per hour of the trimmer, just over 200 miles per hour at a 724 in the quarter mile. Cody started driving at a young age of 14 years of age, and you may say, oh, a junior dragster. No, it was not a junior dragster. He jumped in at 14 years of age, first time ever driving a front engine dragster, which may be even more wild in our day and time than a funny car. They ra they lower that 69 Camaro body over Cody. He's prepared to do his burnout. Get in the pits and take a look at how this car is engineered that they can raise and lower the body. They don't have to remove the, the bar that keeps the body up like so many other crews. Take a look at that car in the pits. And then in the summit lane, the red wave. Two tremendous burnouts. I think right now the winners, though, would be Chris Mozzarella and Dazed and Confused with Cody at the helm. Those were two good-looking burnouts. The Red Wave Omnibody machine, Bill Walls is the owner, and he is driving that machine as well. And I love what it says here in the bio book, crew chief, committee. I wonder if they take votes on how the tune is supposed to go, depending on the conditions. It's rare to see dry hops in our day and time, ladies and gentlemen, but you're seeing them right here at Keystone Raceway Park, the Great Lakes Nostalgia Funny Car Circuit, putting on the show and taking you back in time.
quarter mile passes, and you have in the far lane, Cody, a 690. Zero seven. That is hitting an index, ladies and gentlemen. The quickest ET so far. That is going to be hard to beat. 176 miles per hour. A 693 for the red wave at 178 miles per hour. Another good lap right there. Wow. The Hegler Brothers racing team, they hit it right on the mark. That is going to be hard to top. Cody and company are all the way from the great state of Rhode Island. As I said uh, earlier, I didn't even know there was enough room for there to be drag racers on Rhode Island, but they're from there, representing their state right here in western Pennsylvania. Fired up the frantic Ford. Ford Mustang II. Henry Sweetman, the owner. Drew Sweetman, the driver. Also, Danny Sweetman, the crew chief. And this car is a tribute car. I don't have enough time to fully explain the story right here in the tower as we're going to watch them do burnouts and stage and go down the quarter mile. But you need to take the time and chat with the Sweetmans on this beautiful machine, the Frantic Ford, and get the story of it being a tribute car. Coming to the water box now, though, is Max Stambaugh in Generation X. Stambaugh in the 8th mile with a burnout. The frantic Ford comes out as well, gives his, lays down his burnout. And is Matty, the, is he, can he come back? He went so far, I can't see him from the tower. He's coming back. He's coming back. He went all the way to the, to the thousand foot mark, letting it roll. I imagine that right front wheel it wasn't getting any problem this time on that burnout he took it all the way down smoking the hives what a beautiful burnout that was i think he takes his, takes the stop the top spot in the competition right now for sure matt stanbaugh along with his sister who is at the starting line guiding the individual backing up the car robin stanbaugh they tag team driving duties on this Generation X Vega, and Matt is an accomplished driver. I saw him in an event earlier this year at Eastside Speedway in Virginia, so it's a car that can run the number and run consistently, and he's also an individual that builds motors, and he's a fabricator, and he's been in other realms of motorsport such as the sprint car world as well. So I think that's one reason why in the shakedown run earlier today, he was able to wheel that thing out of the trouble it was in, pulling the shoes, getting it straight once again, and completing a run. His shakedown run was a wild one. It certainly shook and rattled and rolled, just not over on the top. So let's see if the Generation X team has got to get straightened out, go straight down the quarter mile, and the frantic Ford make a frantic run to the top in ET. They're both pedaling. Definitely Generation X and Matt Stambaugh gets their first a 680 in the quarter mile. That's not what they're looking for. A little bit better performance than what they need. 198 miles per hour and for Team Frantic Ford, a lot of pedaling was happening on that run he picked up the front end and carried it for a little ways and it set and he had to do some wheeling had to do some driving oh you gotta love how the smoke billows out from a funny car that doesn't have any side windows just like they used to be way back in the day now in the near lane to the tower the right lane it is the No Money, No Funny 69 Nova. Got to talk with Willie Johnson a little bit earlier today, and I asked him, I said, has there ever been a time where it wasn't funny because you had no money? And he looked at me, he's like, I still have no money. But he's out here, he's competing today, and he is, in fact, the only injected methanol car that is here. So, you get an opportunity. You go by the pits, check his car out, it's injected methanol. All the other cars are blown. They're supercharged. He has an injection set up. Go check it out. 
it's not often that you see injected methanol. It's more common to see injected nitro. So go by the pits, look for this red, no money, no funny, 69 Nova, and take a look at the setup. He said it's all home built and it is a beautiful piece. And you gotta love funny cars looking like the cars that they are named after. crew bringing their drivers into the beams. No money, no funny. Definitely doesn't want to be shell-shocked after this run. Seven ninety, seven ninety at 165 miles per hour for the Shell Shop team and for no money, no funny, 127 miles per hour, 846. The Fireball Monza is fired up, ready to go through the water for their burnout here in the right lane, the near lane to the tower, and in the far lane from the tower, the Monroeville Dodge Lane, the Polkow 78 Corvette, driven by John Wazimowski. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a burnout. He had to drive it on the burnout. I think he widened the groove out there for the racing surface. The, the bracket racers later on can go a little further inside because he just laid out a hot strip of rubber where there was none. I think we might have someone to challenge Matt Stambaugh there for that best burnout here in round one of competition for the funny cars. Who is that driver of that fireball Monza? Well, it is John Wall. And what a stellar driving job that was on that burnout. Beautiful sight it was. Also, John Wall is your 2016 Funny Car National winner. So he knows how to get the job done in competition. Not just match racing, not just barnstorming, but in competition, he knows how to get the job done. John Klausinowski over there in the Polkow 78 Corvette. He comes from an area that I'm definitely familiar with. I used to live outside of Rochester, New York for about six years, and he's up around from the Buffalo area. Would make his home track Lancaster Dragway. Oh, he gets towards the center line strike, but he brings it back. He stays in it in the Monroeville Dodge Lane. 714, 179 miles per hour, but you have the Fireball Monza running a 708 at 185 miles per hour. Great side-by-side -side run, and John Klausinowski had to do some driving over there in that far lane to get it down the track. The, the early 90s and the mid-90s, Al and John Force duking it out and trying to up one another constantly and what a great time in drag racing that was to have Al Hoffman and John Force going at it but you've got a great time in drag racing right now here at Keystone Raceway Park that the son of a legend in Al Hoffman Wayne Hoffman is behind the wheel in a car that was just like dear old dad's that you get to experience go down the quarter mile the crew the crews have brought their drivers to the beams we're getting ready for some more funny car action. Crystal's catching up. Full pulls in the quarter mile. And Wayne Hoffman with a 718 at 188 miles per hour. And Crystal a 713 at 195 miles per hour. 
It appears that the Warpath machine is fired up and ready for its burnout. John, no, excuse me, John Sergio, the owner and driver. This is another machine, ladies and gentlemen. You need to get up close to it. Check out this paint job. It is beautiful and correctly themed throughout. Here's his burning. Big Girl 55 now coming through the water box. Oh, that was a nice strong burnout from the shoebox here in the Summit Lane. So back on the warpath, I was definitely impressed by this machine paint job on it. Notice the the Indian with the full headdress but wearing the filter filtered mask that you wear back in the days of old to you know, filter out the nitro and methanol fumes and then you take a look you'll notice war at the end the tomahawk is the R and then there's a headdress coming off the start of path with the E just beautifully themed throughout. Also John Sergio has owned that body since 1988 and it has, he has been the sole owner he's been the only racer to race with it and it is a beautiful piece but take the time and google 85 Buick Somerset it may look great as a funny car that was definitely an interesting car on the road though. great for grandma and mob boxes mob bosses and family fun. Both picking up speed as they get out of the gate, down through the quarter mile. Here in the Summit Lane, Big Girl runs a 719, 194 miles per hour. Warpath, not running what I was expecting out of Mr. John Sergio and the Warpath team. We come to this point, and the way in which it has shaped out in Chicago style drag racing, which is what the money cars have been racing under and in. Sadly, no English pizza is involved. I'd like to have one right now. The Chicago style racing is based on price and each other. The other index, 690, is no quicker than that. And the final round is comprised of the two quickest cars racing above the index. The turn number one lights. And the two cars that did just that. Here in the summit Here in Victory Lane at Keystone Raceway, just outside of Pittsburgh, Total Insanity picks up the Wren Chris Mozzarella. It's totally insane, dude, that you edged out Mr. Walls in the Red Wave by one number, make it into the final round, and dude, that inch of a crack open door, you went the full quarter mile to pick up the win. Walls are great people. I, I love those guys. Uh, I hate to do it to them, but uh, you know we're out here to try to do what they're doing too. So. Uh, you know, we used to our advantage and we made try to make the best of it, you know. So, uh, uh, got lucky against Cody. Cody's a great competitor and uh, just edged him out also. Great, great night of great competition. 
So, man, you just won a anniversary event. You know, every year is special that a race goes on, but markers as 10th, 15th, and 20th are special. And you just won the 15th. That's got to be a feather in your cap amongst these nostalgia cars. Well, this, and I got a big one. This is the big, this biggest event for this type of car. So, you know, this is always the we always try to bring our A game to this one because this is uh, if you got a nostalgia, I'll go a funny car. This is the event you want to win, and uh, we just we just try our best. You know, that's all I can say. Chris Mazzarella, the winner here at the Great Lakes Nostalgia Funny Car Circuit, Funny Car Nationals, presented by Good Vibrations and Motorsports. Thank you. All right, drag racing fan, let's wrap this video up. First, thank you to Dennis Saleswimmer, promoter of the Great Lakes Nostalgia Funny Car Circuit. Thank you to Greg Miller, the owner of Keystone Raceway Park. And thank you for who initially reached out to me, Chris Mozzarella, the owner and driver of Total Insanity, that Nostalgia Funny Car that was even mentioned in this video. Had a great time announcing my first ever drag race again to those guys thank you for the opportunity now i'm heading home actually not from that particular race but from waggler motorsports park in indiana covering southeast gassers association action you'll see that on the channel later but i wanted to share with you all that announcing is far more challenging than what you might think definitely appreciate your local announcer at your track whatever track that is maybe send a cold beverage up their way a hot dog or a hamburger let them know that you appreciate them it is more challenging than what you think it may be i felt that i went in to this announcing gig and i was prepared i had taken the time to talk to the drivers, talk to crew members, get the stories on the cars, take photo, take video, uh, take a look at the track and experience what I thought and what I had been encouraged to experience from experienced announcers. I had covered it all and I felt prepared going in and then I also had the bio book from Dennis Salzwimmer to help aid me in announcing and I feel like I needed even more. So you can never not be too prepared for something like announcing and I think one of the reasons for that is because you're trying to in the moment describe what is happening and then there's moments within drag racing if we'll be honest with ourselves that are not that exciting and you're trying to make those moments exciting the backup the moments before staging the describing of the runs after the run during downtime and the tractor is running on the track fluid has gone down whatever it may be filling in the gap of boredom with something exciting or at least good information that's more challenging than you think and to plug in that information is so important in those times and just weaving it all together in announcing is something that I definitely hope I get to do again. If you're out there and you need an announcer for your event, big or small, let me know. Lee Craft, the Monday Morning Racer, love to come out and do that for you. But definitely, I know now where to improve and I intend to improve on it. But this was one of the remaining elements within motorsports media that I wanted to check off that I had not been able to. I can do the videography, I can do the photography, I can do the pit reporting, I can host live shows. I had not announced though, and now I have been able to do it, and it went okay. So, thank you for watching along this vlog showcasing the first time in which I got to announce there at the Funny Car Nationals at Keystone Raceway Park with the Great Lakes Nostalgia Funny Car Circuit in the house. Check those guys out. Great group of funny car racers. Get yourself to Keystone and experience that great track. If you would, subscribe right here to Monday Morning Racer on the YouTube channel. It's free and you're going to get great motorsports content. Hit the like button for me. And guys, until next time, I'm going to keep rolling to the next race and you all keep the pedal to the metal. God bless.